We celebrate today this magnificent feast of the ascension of the Lord into heaven, of his enthronement at the right hand of the Father. And this feast has an overwhelming character of praise about it. We especially hear it in our psalm, God has gone up with shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord, sing praise to the Lord, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise from Psalm 47. And it's right that we praise the Lord today on this incredible feast because this is a day when human nature entered definitively into heaven. This is the day when the Lord fulfilled his promise that he will go and prepare a place for us, that he is bodily in heaven, enthroned in heaven, and ruling over all, victorious over sin and death, over everything that could hold us back from him. Is this truly a day worthy of praise? We also hear in our first reading how he tells the apostles to stay in Jerusalem and await the promise of the Father. This great feast of the ascension is both the time when Jesus ascends into heaven, leaving his disciples, but promises them once again. We've heard it over and over through the Gospel of John, and here we hear it in the the Acts of the Apostles, that he promises them once again that he will not leave them orphans, and that in fact, it's better if he goes because then he gets to send them the gift of the Holy Spirit. We've talked in recent weeks, especially last week, about how, like, how is it better? I would want Jesus right here with me. And we have to take him at his word that this gift of the Holy Spirit that he sends us is an even better way of being in communion with him and with the Father. That this is the foretaste of our eternal communion with the Holy Trinity through this great gift of the Holy Spirit. So he tells the apostles to remain in Jerusalem. And if we read on a little bit further in the Acts of the Apostles, just a little bit out of our reading today, it ends in verse 11, but if you go to the next paragraph in Acts of the Apostles, we hear what they do. They go back to the upper room, and it says that they devoted themselves of one accord, uses that nice Greek word, homothumadon, that we've preached about before, which means one in mind and spirit and heart, this deep unity, they devote themselves to prayer, preparing for this gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So why not send them the gift right away? Why do they have to wait? I think it tells us something about the immensity of the gift, that it needs preparation. Now normally, liturgically, the ascension is celebrated on Thursday. Uh, a couple days ago, but often in the United States and also across the world to make it easier for people to come to this feast, we celebrate it on Sunday. But if you start on Thursday with the ascension of the Lord, and then you start preparing together with the apostles for this gift of the Holy Spirit, and you count the days from that Friday until the Saturday right before Pentecost, you end up with nine days of preparation. I don't know if you've ever heard of a prayer novena, but this is the original prayer novena. Novena comes from the Latin word novum, it just means nine. They prayed in earnest for nine days, preparing, making this original novena to prepare for the Holy Spirit because this is a gift that is too immense to receive immediately. Jesus tells them they need to go and prepare for they will receive power from on high, and they will become his witnesses to the ends of the earth. This word power is used in all three of our readings today. It's, uh, there's actually several Greek words for power, and when St. Paul talks about it in Ephesians, he deploys four different words to describe the, surpa- the surpassing greatness of his might at work in those who believe. Our Lord wants to give us this immense gift, this power, not as the world understands power, but the power to be free from sin, the power for conversion towards God, to live life abundantly in the Spirit, and the power to testify to him with our lives and with our words. That's the gift that the Lord wants to give us on the great feast of Pentecost, which we'll celebrate in just one week. And so today, When we celebrate the Lord's ascension into heaven, 
we should pray with the apostles in earnest. That's actually our practice for this week. Even though you can only get the nine days if you started on Friday, last Friday, I think even just praying over these five, six days preparing for Pentecost, maybe that should encourage us to pray even more to make up for the lost time. But to pray in preparation for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now when I imagine the apostles in the upper room for these nine days praying together of one accord, dedicating themselves to prayer, I imagine prayers of intercession, right? Also prayers of petition, Lord, please send this great promise to us. But I also imagine them praying prayers of praise. And that's our specific practice this week, is the prayer of praise. It's often neglected. Sometimes we don't think of it. Often we'll go to prayer and we'll either throw up everything that we need to the Lord. That's a weird way to say it. We'll offer him everything that we need. Um, but we'll forget to praise him for his goodness. As I mentioned at the beginning of this homily, this Feast of the Ascension is characterized by this praise, including in our Psalm 47. In fact, praising God is one of the most consistent things you see throughout the Psalms. But it's not always in situations where everything is going well. In fact, most of the Psalms of Lament where the psalmist cries out from a place of darkness place of trial, a place of deep, profound struggle, where it feels like everything is closing in, where he's trapped and cannot escape. In those moments in the Psalms, the psalmist turns and says, and yet I will still praise you, O Lord. It's a way of anticipating the great and salvific work which the psalmist knows that the Lord is going to accomplish because he is good. So we praise him for that goodness. We need to imitate these psalms, whether we're in a place of doing pretty well right now, where we feel like we can pray with the Psalm 47 from our, from our readings today. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to the Lord with, with cries of joy, sing praise to the Lord, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise whether we need to pray with a psalm like that, just overflowing abundance of praise, or whether we need to turn to a psalm like Psalm 42. Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God, I will praise him still, my Savior and my God, calling out from a place of darkness. In any situation, to praise the Lord is to recognize his goodness and his personal and infinite love which will not stop reaching after you to bring you out of that darkness into his light, to clothe you with this power from on high, this power for freedom in the spirit, to live with an actual authentic joy and peace in communion with God, and to testify to that good news to all the world. For us, during this period of preparation for Pentecost, during this week where we dedicate ourselves to prayer in earnest, let's take on this prayer of praise, knowing that God desires to give us these good gifts and anticipating his goodness, even if we feel like we're in a moment of darkness, by praising him. If you want to know more about this prayer of praise, we've written our practice of the week. It's in our Sabbath guide. If you go to saintanneparish.org, and click on Sabbath Guide, you'll see it right there if you scroll down to a section called Process. It says Practice of the Week. And we have a lot of resources there to teach you this prayer of praise if you've never done it before. It's something that can pull us out of darkness by the very fact of praising him, confident that he will do it. Praise the Lord.